we shall tackle one more problem involving a pattern which is known as the Floyd Strangle after the inventor or the person who first showed up this particular pattern. So let's say the number of rows are 4. Okay, so you have 4 rows. On the first row it will print 1 term, second row 2 terms, third row 3rd term, fourth row 4th fourth term. It starts with 1, the next row is 1 plus it becomes 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10. So in order for this program to really work, we have 4 rows. It can go up to any number of rows depending on how many you want. So what we'll do is we'll write a function called as a Floyd which will simply print the number of rows in this particular pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say void Floyd and I'm going to say short rows all right and using this variable i i am going to print the number of rows so i am going to say for i equal to 1 i less than or equal to the number of rows i plus plus all right in the first step i'm just going to show you how to print the rows so here what i'm going to do here is print f percentage d slash n and the value of i so here we are simply going to print the number of rows and try to show you it on the output screen. So let's take this particular program and take it on to code blocks. All right. And let's see in code blocks what we can play around with it. So here if you see I'm asking the user to enter the number of rows. User is going to enter the number of rows. It's a short data type. Then I'm calling the function called as Floyd by passing the value of this rows. This gets copied into a variable called rows in uppercase. Now, since I'm using my own user defined function, it's necessary to declare a prototype of this particular function. So I'm declaring a prototype of the function Floyd. Then next what I'm doing is in the first loop, I'm trying to solve this problem step by step so that you understand the logic. I'm just going to print four rows, assuming the user is going to enter four as the number of rows. So here if you see, I have asked the person to enter the number of rows. So let's say I enter number of rows as 4. So here if you end up seeing the value of i starting from 1 to 4 is printed. So far we are good. Now what we shall do is I shall introduce one more loop to keep track of how many numbers need to be printed on each row. So if you see if I take j as 1 as long as j is less than or equal to i it should print that value on the row. So initially j will be equal to i, less than equal to i. So it will print some number here. j i becomes 2 in the second row. So I will print two numbers on the second row. j should be less than or equal to i because i is 3. So it will print three numbers on the third row. j should be less than or equal to i. So it will print four numbers in the fourth row. So what I am going to do here is I am going to take another variable called j. Let's see start with the initial value 0. Here what I am trying to do here is I am using a loop. I am saying for j is equal to 1 alright and j is less than or equal to the value of i I am saying j plus plus. So here what I am doing is instead of i I am going to print the value of j also. So I am going to say j and next value is going to be of i. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the slash n every time. I, okay, let's use the slash n. That's fine. Not a problem at all. So what I'm doing is for every value of i, I'm printing the value of j. And at the end of this particular thing, all right. So let's do a. I'm, I'll tell you why I'm doing this backslash n a little later. All right. So I can take off this backslash n all right so let me give a space here let me give a space here so you what you're going to see is you're going to see the value of j and i for every time i run this particular loop so let's try to first compile it and see if it compiles all right so far so good it seems to be compiling let's enter the number of rows so now this needs a bit of explanation okay here i is one j value is also one on the second row i is 2, j is 1, then again it prints 2, j is 2, i is also 2. On the next row i is 3, so i is first time, j is first time 1, next time j becomes 2, 
third time j becomes 3 in the fourth row i is 4 so it will start with j as 1 j as 2 j as 3 and j as 4 so now we are able to print four rows with the values of i and j but what we need to do is instead of printing the value of j we need to use another variable called as k i'll tell you why i'm going to use k i'll start with k is equal to 1 so first time what i'm doing is i am going to print the value of k okay i'm going to print the value of k and not i and j the reason i'm printing the value of k is k is 1 so first time when i is 1 j is 1 it will print 1 on the first row j will end up becoming 2 once it becomes 2 2 is not less than 1 so it will come and print the it will go to the next line i now becomes 2 j is 1 1 is less than or equal to 2 so it will k has already been increased by 1 so k is going to print as 2 now then j becomes 2 2 is still less than or equal to 2 so k will print as 3 now after 2 it will print 3 so let's run this program and go ahead with the explanation that should make your life quite easier so here let's say the number of rows is 4 okay now you can see i was 1 so it's printed only 1 here now i has become 2 so it has k's value has printed 2 and 3 i was 3 so it has printed 4 5 and 6 i was 4 so it has printed 7 8 9 and 10 that means it has printed four numbers so these are the numbers you can take a look at which happen to be the numbers of the floyd triangle so to explain this is quite simple let's take the number of rows just three okay let's assume the number of rows we are going to print is only three then i is nothing j is zero k is one so initially i is one one is less than or equal to three j is one one is less than or equal to 1 okay so i come here i'll print the value of k so what is the value of k k happens to be 1 okay 1 is printed on the screen j becomes 2 is 2 less than or equal to 1 it is false so it will go here i from 1 will become 2 2 is still less than or equal to 3 j is back to 1 1 is less than or equal to 2 so I come here now k was how much k was 1 but k after printing had become 2 so on the next line I have printed 2 why did I go to the next line because after I increased the value of j and it became greater than i I went and printed backslash n so 2 has printed for k j now becomes 2 2 is still less than or equal to 2 so the new value of k was 3 so it ended up printing 3 j has now become 3 3 is definitely not less than or equal to 2 so i now becomes 3 3 is less than or equal to 3 j is back to 1 1 is less than or equal to 3 what was the last value of k was 3 after printing 3 k had become 4 so on the next line it ended up printing 4 k has now become 5 j has become 2 2 is less than or equal to 3 so k the new value of k which got incremented after the printing it became 5 j has become 2 2 is still less than or equal to 3 okay sorry j has become 3 3 is less than or equal to 3 so k is next value is printed k's value is 6 j has now become 4 4 is not less than or equal to 3 it goes back here i becomes 4 4 is not less than or equal to 4 it will come back and end this particular logic so what i would suggest is take a table draw the values of i and j and as well as k and run through it it's a really simple problem but you will understand how we use loops within loops or something called as nested loops to generate a floyd's pattern